welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel, soon to be the Adventure and Travel podcast. I am your hostess, Carrie Zilka, and this week's episode is super, super fun. We have on the line Jen Dale, who is the kennel manager and a guide for a company called Wolf Song Adventures in Mushing, which is run by John and Mary Thiel. Wolf Song Adventures in Mushing is pretty cool. It's up in northern Wisconsin, and we are going to hear all about how you and I can go and drive a dog sled. Because how fun is that? This episode is brought to you by Cryptic, K-R-Y-P-T-E-K. I am in love with their new camo. I wore the Highlander bib overalls and coat while I was hunting down in Illinois and up in Wisconsin. And I can't wait to wear it this year in the cold weather because it really kept me super warm and I love the Highlander pattern. So it's brought to you by Real Avid. Check out Real Avid for all of your gun needs. They have a wonderful shotgun tool as well as lots of AR accessories. So if you're into guns, check out realavid.com. Well, Jen, thank you so very much for taking the time to come on the show. The listeners and I are very excited to learn about dog sledding, what it's all about, how you even got involved in it, and how we can, do you call it just driving a, a dog sled? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's start let's start out by introducing the audience to you. How did you even get involved in all of this? Uh, actually, when I was twelve, so back in the mid nineties, uh, my neighbor just down the road had had Siberian Huskies, and he was having a litter of pups, and so I did what any good twelve year old could do and mowed lawns all summer and earned enough money to buy my first pup and then about a year later I had I think about I think I had six and so then I I was ready to full team and then one of my uncles actually got involved which was great so then he and I could run together. So you just like woke up one morning and was like I think I'm just gonna <laughs> buy some dogs and I'm gonna take people on dog sled rides. <laughs> kind of I mean That's I really awesome. like winter sports and Loved being out, and skiing wasn't enough, so, and plus I love dogs, so it's a perfect, perfect combo of it. That is cool. I had a Siberian Husky when I was in the Navy, and it was the best, best pet I've ever had. Nice. So, <laughs> definitely have a certain love for them. Oh, yeah. So, so tell us more about the company that you run now. Um, so, actually, it's, it, the company is owned and um, run by John and Mary Thiel, and they started dog sledding actually kind of around the same time I did. We always found that was funny, um, about 1997. And so they both went to dog sled races and just fell in love with it. And same thing happened, you know, started getting dogs and won more dogs so that they could run with friends. And then they moved to this area so they would have more room to run with the dogs in the Bayfield area. And um, just thought it would be really great to get to get more people involved in it. And so they started off Wolf Song Adventures in Machine, and we run it very, very hands-on. So you get to meet all the dogs. They're all really, really friendly. Learn how to harness, learn how to drive your own sled. If you want to, you can also ride as well, and then go out on the trail. And so then I, I joined their team. It's been eight years ago now. And so now I've moved more into the position of managing the kennel and and um, we have a couple other guides that work with us as well. But it's just a great experience. How many dogs do you have in your operation? Uh, right now, we have a, we just had a litter of pups six weeks ago. And so we now have 44 dogs. <laughs> that's a lot of dogs. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of... Four yeah. of them are, four of them are oh. technically retired. So we keep all of our dogs stay in our kennel. We never... Okay. We never give old dogs away. We're just too attached to them, and this is their home, and so they get to live their life out and run when they still can. And we actually have a 15 year old that was still running this year, which is amazing. Uh -huh. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. About what age, or is it dependent on the dog when you decide to retire them? It's kind of dependent on the dog, and it's more. We just really watch how they're feeling, mm -hmm. and um, we treat anything we can. Um, Many times it's just a matter of they need they need longer a longer time to warm up. Like you can't just throw them on a team and take off lightning fast from the kennel. So we just make sure they they properly get warmed up, 
and then and then they're able to run. And you know, just like your house pet, you get some that you know their body just gives out a lot earlier than you would hope. Just like you know, humans are different that way. Sure. And then others like like Doey, who was 15, and he ran every other day this entire winter, which was amazing. And he's still <laughs> just funky and running around in the kennel. So that is awesome. It's pretty cool to see that. Yeah. Because it's just in their blood. I can imagine that, like, having to stay in the kennel all day long while while you hear the buddies, you know, barking yeah. as they as they set off would be torture. <laughs> oh, it's that's. I mean, I feel yeah. just awful. Like you leave, you leave, and you totally do. You hear them, and yeah. But you know, okay, I'm gonna take you out this afternoon. It's gonna be all right. So, yeah, they get a lot of free time to run around and play with the puppies, and yeah. So they have a pretty pretty good life. I bet. They, and explain to the listeners and to me what makes a Siberian Husky different than, say, a Doberman as to why they can travel long distances over the snow and the ice. So they just have this this built-in desire to pull. That is something we never train the puppies. Um, they instantly, they want to do that. And the way their body structures are built, they have really tough pads on their paws so they can handle going over ice and running constantly in hard miles on snow of course if you're doing a lot of miles you can put many people have probably seen dogs with uh booties on Mm -hmm. their on their feet and so a lot of racers will use that when they're doing fast hard miles um we tend not to have to use that on our trip um we average about anywhere from eight to ten miles uh during a trip some are lighter some are more um, and then just their coat structure. I mean, they build, they never, they don't like being inside. Yeah. Um, they have this really thick undercoat that they start growing in the fall, and it and it builds up. And then on top of that, they have tough guard hairs. And so the guard hairs protect them um, from the elements, and then the undercoat keeps them nice and warm. So we never have issues with, with dogs getting cold, and even the coldest temps that we can get around here. So they're just set up. They're set up to survive and go long distances and take on the cold weather. And it's pretty amazing what they can do. And they just want to work. They do. They love it. <laughs> Tell me about the different um, packages that you offer. Because you guys offer a lot. Everything, just looking briefly glancing, I'm like, oh, I could go for a half day. Oh, I could go winter camping and go for a whole weekend. Or um, Yeah, uh, yeah. we try to offer um, a variety so that um, all, all different – types of people can, you know, enjoy the experience. Um, not everybody wants to sleep out in the elements. Um, so the shortest trip that we offer every every day we are open is um, the afternoon run, and that's uh, about two and a half hours. So you come in, greet all the dogs, learn how to harness, drive the sleds, you take off, and then you you run whatever trail we're going to run for the day, depending on the on the trail conditions. And then we come back to the kennel, feed the dogs, and sometimes help put the dogs away, whatnot. Um, the next longer trip is our morning adventure, and that includes lunch on the trail. So you get you get all of the meeting of the dogs and the same instruction and experience sledding, but you usually go longer, and you get that chance to stop on the trail, have a hot lunch, and just be with the dogs, ask more questions. It's just a little more time with the dogs. Um, this year we offered, we, we started up what we called it the sunset run and that one's pretty neat. So it's about the same period of time as the morning run, about four to four and a half hours. And you go out and you leave before sunset and you have dinner on the trail. And then usually timing's right, right as the sun's setting, uh, we, we take off again on the trail and then put on headlamps and only use them if we need to because uh, there's usually so much light reflecting on the snow, and then actually dog sled back to the kennel at night, which is, that's that's an amazing experience. That sounds to be out at night so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And the, the best thing about that one is that you get a chance to get used to driving the sled in the light Yeah. and feeling feeling how to gain your balance, and then and then you can just, you can just trust, trust that you're going to do a great job and, and, just feel the sled and go with it. And most mm-hmm. people we found don't end up turning on their headlights. They really get into it, and and uh, and you can your eyes adjust well yeah. enough. Oh yeah, especially if you get a night, especially like with a full moon or a bright moon. Oh. It's yeah, yeah, it's no problem. 
It's great. And then we do offer just a straight up night run too, but that one we do we do encourage people to come once before during the light so they actually have a feeling for it. Um and then yes, then we do we do overnight camping trips. Um and those we we actually take the dogs to a, a different trail location. Um it's called trucking dogs. When you put them into a, a trailer, they each have a box that they share with a partner and then you set up uh your takeoff shoot at a different location and so then we dog sled into where I have canvas wall tents set up with wood stoves um, in the tents and then that that actually ends up just being a lot more dog time because you get to we the dogs come with us sled out and then they we put them on picket lines so they each have their own spot that they're tethered to and feed them and then you know just throughout the night usually we have a campfire and then it's you know it's great. You can you can go over and pet a dog whenever you want, snuggle with it a little bit, and then usually at some point in the night the dogs the dogs actually all sing together. Either they hear a coyote or sometimes wolves. We do have some packs around here and it and it sets them off and then and then everybody gets to hear that. That's a really magical experience. That's awesome. You have lodging at your place too, right? So no, no, not oh. no, no, not not at the not at the kennel. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, um, but there is there are so many different bed and breakfasts and and really nice spots to stay in the Bayfield area and Cornucopia area. Gotcha. How many dog sleds do you normally take out at a time? Like, we is can, it like is it like snowmobiling where you can go up with like like ten people or you know ten sleds? Is it like that or is it smaller amount? <laughs> A, sm- a little smaller amount than that. Typically, um, we take six sleds out, and so the front sled is driven by the lead guide, and um, that's where if somebody would like to ride, um, they can sit with that guide. And then there are four sleds behind the lead guide, and those are driven by participants solo. We, we never combine up two participants be, uh, because you can tip your sled over, and uh, yeah. you don't really want to be riding and get tipped over. <laughs> yeah. So riders always go go with any guide. And then we have a, um, a guide in the very back end. That Then in case someone does lose their sled, they can give them a ride and catch up. And so that, that we felt usually about six, typically six adults. Um, if it's a mixed group with, with younger kids, we can take – we can take more numbers because kids can pile in or we could add on an extra little sled and then then the kids can drive their own teams of like maybe one or two dogs depending on how big and how fast the conditions are. Sure. And are your prices on the websites, is that um, per person driving a sled? Like say my husband and I want to come up and we want to go on the sunset run, but I don't necessarily need to drive a sled. I just want to sit in the sled. Is it still mm-hmm. the same price for per person? Yeah, okay. It is. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Well, then him and I both want a sled because that'd be yeah, awesome. Of <laughs> Usually, anybody that says, "Oh, I think I just want to ride," most most of the time, once they get in there, and we really explain how to drive the sled, they're like, "Okay, maybe just ride for a little bit," and then and then they end up driving. Yeah, totally. So, oh, that's funny. Yeah. What would be the number one tip you would give somebody? Coming up to go for the very first time, what would be the number one tip you would give them? Mm. Have no expectations. Just come in. Every trip is different. Don't worry about falling. It doesn't hurt. And it's just, it's, it's a blast. Don't, don't, don't worry about what's going to happen. Just, just come out on the trail. Yeah, definitely. Don't worry about being cold either. That's usually the number one concern. We, we have plenty of extra gear and no one no one ever gets cold on the trail because I can imagine it's not like most you know like I ice fish so when we went snowmobiling I wore my ice fishing gear yeah (laughs) I didn't ice fish I would have nothing to wear (laughs) I can imagine that people you get people from cities and all over the place that probably sure someone forgets a pair of boots Yeah. yeah but and the nice thing is we have um so when 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 John and Mary Thiel were starting Wolfsong Adventures in Mushing, they also started up a clothing line called Wolfsong Wear. And that, um, uh, all sorts of different jackets, um, parkas, and and uh, they're all made from wool and polar fleece with fur ruffs. 
and then we also make snow pants and shells to go over that. So we have we have plenty of those to loan out as well. And then then you look like the real deal too when you're doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> what is the season? What are your dates that you run them? So we officially open um, to the public uh, typically the week before Christmas. Um, usually we have we have snow then. We, we tend to get quite a bit of lake effect snow here. So um, many times when the rest of the state is dry south of us, we're, we, we maybe have been running for the last month on, on sleds. Um, it's just it's a it's the beauty of having the lake up here, and then most seasons we get usually into the middle of March. We just closed um, this past week, and this season this spring was a little different than most. It just we had too many warm up spells that then um, caused our base to deteriorate, um, and so we couldn't we couldn't we just couldn't last. The, there's many years that we we run I've run into April because um, we just we get I mean typical years we get close to 150 inches of snow and so we go out every time it snows more than a couple inches we're out on snowmobiles and we're packing it down so that we're making a really solid base that then lasts so maybe there'll be you know say March 20th there's bare patches that you can see but your trail is still solid and great. Do you do you guys ride on the same trails that snowmobiles ride, or do you have separate ones? Uh, no, any up in in Bayfield County, um, a law was passed quite a few years ago that uh, the the actual designated snowmobile trails are off limit to any other use from December first through the end of the season, and that's just for safety issues. But the beauty of of Bayfield County is that I, th- I believe it's close to eighty five percent is all public land, whether it's county forest, state forest, or national forest. And there are so many different trails that we can have access to. So we, I mean, it's a rare occasion when we meet anybody out on the trail. Yeah, because yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine, like you said, like, what if you dump a sled? Yeah, on the rare occasion, you might dump a sled or or somebody is just being a jerk on a snowmobile zooming by or whatever. I could I oh, can't even imagine. Well, the nice thing up here is... Um, just just because it is so wooded, even even the the snowmobilers that are out on trail running, it's much different than other places where they're just you know screaming as fast. Yeah. And the trails are too windy. It's more for exploration. It's almost like backcountry snowmobiling. So, I mean, the times that we have come across other snowmobilers, and we're always very careful if we're actually crossing a trail, we stop and listen. But usually, the snowmobilers are more are more shocked and they pull off and they're like, this is so cool, you know, and then we go past and our dogs are used to machines. Um, We typically run a snowmobile through our kennel just to pack down a trail for feeding and walking the dogs out. Let's talk a little bit about your location because you are like way far (laughs) north, Wisconsin, (laughs) like way (laughs) far. (laughs) So explain to the listeners your location and maybe some, how far you are from some bigger cities. So let's see, we, we are technically located in um, the town of Bayfield, Wisconsin, but we're really actually quite a lot closer to a smaller village called Cornucopia, and that's, um, that's the beginning of the south shore of Lake Superior. Um, and, again, that helps us get all the lake effect being closer to the lake. But we're about, we're about 15, 20 miles from the city of Bayfield, um, that's a pretty small city. Uh, year-round population is around 400. Um, it, of course, booms in the summertime when tourism goes up quite a bit. And then Ashland is uh, probably the next. Ashland and Washburn, uh, those are about 30 to 45 miles away. And then, of course, Duluth is an hour and a half away, and that's quite quite a big city. Most people have heard of Superior and Duluth um, right on the Right on the tip, the south tip of Lake Superior. Yeah, you're like six and a half hours from me. It's, it's yeah. gonna, it's we're gonna have to come up for like a weekend ride because. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the great thing. There's you know there's more to do up here in the winter than just dog sledding. So many trails, ice fishing. I mean that's a huge, that's really huge in Schwamigan Bay, and there's a couple different outfitters as well in the area that 
that can take people out in case you don't have your own equipment. Yeah, I can imagine. Snowmobiling, dog sledding, ice fishing, yep. skiing. Yep. Yep. We even have a little ski hill, too, oh. Mount Ashaway. It's great. Tubing hills and, I don't know, five, six runs. and It's 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 pretty good for, for northern Wisconsin. Do you guys have any craft breweries up there? Uh, yeah, we do have, um, out of Ashland, uh, Wisconsin, it's uh, South Shore Brewery. And they, they are always coming up with a with a new new brew. They also have a tap house now um, in Washburn where they're open in the evenings and they actually um, do a bit of their brewing there and they have a great shuffleboard table that they just made. And then they have a restaurant in, in Ashland itself. Okay, nice. We're always looking for breweries because that's our thing. Oh, My yeah. husband and I, well, the Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you, if you could recommend one place that someone should absolutely can't miss dinner, at what restaurant would you recommend? Mm. Like, what is your favorite place? Fish fry or whatever prime rib. The two staples of Wisconsin. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're not talking fish fry, I really enjoy for dinners the lose. And that's in Washburn, and it's a great um, Italian restaurant where they they have uh, um, fire. They do fire roasted uh, pizzas, and they have uh, gelato there that they make. And the pricing is very very reasonable. It's great, and they in the summer they grow a lot of their own greens that they use. Um, and then. Fish fry is great in in Bayfield itself. The pier does a really good, um, a really good all you can eat fish fry, and they usually have lake trout and whitefish, which is great. Fantastic. Cool. So, people who are listening, where can they find out more about Wolf Song Adventures? Uh, both our Facebook site that I during the season I'm posting usually if I can, um, a couple times, if not more, a week. Um, that's where most of the current news comes. And then we always link it and update our website as well, which is just wolfsongadventuresandmushing.com. Those are our two, two main avenues. And then you can always call call our office in town as well. And any anybody that would be answering the phone knows all the details. <laughs> I have to say, you guys, for... You have a, a really nice website. The photos are phenomenal on there. Whoever does your photography or, I don't know, if people just are like, here, I took these great photos. Here you go. They're awesome. <laughs> nice. It's kind of actually a combo. Yeah. Professional and then also what we've we've been able to take either ourselves or friends have, have submitted to us, which is amazing. Yeah. Some of them are just awesome and they just make you want to get up and go right now. <laughs> <laughs> They do. And your your website is very comprehensive. Like, it's really complete. I've gone, whether it's, you know, snowmobiling trips or whatever, you know, non-humongous corporation outfits, and sometimes their websites are so rudimentary and not informative. And you guys have every possible question I could have come up with. <laughs> I could have found the answer there. So I think that's wonderful. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Lots of effort, for yeah. sure. And I'll definitely, yeah, I will definitely, um, I'll link all of this information in the show notes, the website, the Facebook, and the restaurant recommendations, of course. Cool. I appreciate you taking the time to come on. That was really all the questions I had. Was there anything, any cool stories you wanted to share with the listeners? Um, put me on the spot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> any funny stories or any interesting ones with like do you get people from like out of the country to come and go dog sledding oh we have occasionally yeah um, I, oh, a super funny funny story would be we have we have this dog his name is Iger and he has now sired a couple litters for us and uh he's currently a new grandpa right now with our newest litter of puppies but he he's he's probably one of our our cockiest dogs in the kennel and uh so we have in the past we've spoken to him in a in an austrian accent just because you know <laughs> when you have an attitude like that you need to you need to do that and so he's become so used to being spoken to that 
he won't listen unless you talk to him in the accent. <laughs> That's how he knows and you're being serious. Shows how how much we allow, you know, continue it to go on. And so we actually did have a couple from, I believe they're from, well, they're actually from Switzerland, but very slim, similar in, you know, picking up on the accents. And they, they're standing next to Iger and petting him, and they start speaking to him, and he just goes nuts. He's just rubbing against them, <laughs> pawing at them, and it just, it probably made his day. I thought they're like, <laughs> he's like, you are my people. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's just, I mean, it shows that dogs have so much personality. Yeah. I mean, for, for many people, they come on the trip and they're like, oh man, dog sledding was almost secondary. Like, yeah. just being with all these dogs and getting to work with them was, you know, such such a huge part of the trip i definitely can can imagine yeah (laughs) well cool well again thank you so much for taking the time this was a very fun interview cool um, well thanks so much i'm glad it worked out i'm pretty sure you'll see my husband and i next next winter perfect (laughs) (laughs) and that'll do it thanks so much for listening you can also follow me on social media. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carrie Zilka, C-A-R-R-I-E-Z-Y-L-K-A. 